In this video, I'll go over how to plot a graph. The, the actual process is looking at my table of data, which is appearing on the screen now, and then working out what scale I need to use on the x and y axes so that my plots are appropriately spread out and making the best use of the grid. The rule here is that I need to use more than half of the grid in both directions. So we'll be working that out in a methodical way. The, as you can see on the table of data, I've got P as my independent variable. That's going to go on the Y axis. So P is over here on the Y axis. And WQ is going to be on the X axis. All right. The first thing I'm going to do is work out the scale for the X axis. I said that I need to use more than half the grid, so I need to know how big my grid is first. And we do this by counting how many large squares we have. A large square is 10 of these small squares across. So I have one, two, eight large squares. So half of the grid in the horizontal direction here along the x-axis is four large squares. So that's, I need to make sure I use at least four grids. Now the, the way that we actually measure this is from the left plotted point to the far right plotted point. So it doesn't matter what numbers you actually put on your axis, if your left and right plotted points are less than four large squares apart, then you've used less than half the grid so that we need to make sure that we use this we choose the scale so that those points are spread out across the grid there's no point having a, a scale and numbering all the way to the right if actually you've just used a tiny little segment of the grid on the bottom left now what i need to do is look at my table of data for wq and look at my maximum and minimum values so, what have I got there? X-axis. Maximum is 0 0.387. Minimum is 0 0.063. So I need to fit both of those points in. <coughs> the difference there between the two is 0 0.324. That's the different that's 0.387 minus 0 0.063. Now I need to use more than half half the grid, that's four large squares. We just figure that out by looking at the grid. So what I'm going to do now is 0 0.324 divided by 4, so I need to use at least four grid squares, is 0 0.081. I need to use at least that that scale per large square in order to use more than half the grid right so that would mean each each of these squares here would be 0 0.081 sorry 0 0.081 yeah and then this would be 0 0.081 but obviously we wouldn't want to use that in reality for for a grid square because that's going to give us a very odd scale and then trying to fit our plotted points onto that grid is going to be very difficult. So what we will need to do next is figure out what's a suitable systematic value that we could use to satisfy this minimum condition here. So if I choose a value that's less than 0.081, I'll use it more than half of the grid. Okay. So I'm going to choose a value that is lower than 0 0.081. The best one I think is 0 0.05. So I'm going to use that. All right, so now I will, and um, I need to make sure that I start just below 0 0.063 so that the 0 0.063 will fit onto my grid. Let's go and plot those. We start off with 0 0.05, 0 0.10, 0 0.15, 0 0.25, 0 0.26, 0 0.27, 0 0.28, 0 0.29, 0 0.30, 0 0.31, 0 0.32, 0 0.33, 0 0.34, 0 0.35, 0 0.36, 0 0.37, 0 
and so on. <clears throat> okay, that point four five wasn't really necessary because my largest value is point three eight seven, and that's just less than the point four zero here, so it will fit into the grid between there. Okay, <clears throat> next job. We're going to repeat this process for the y-axis. How many squares do I have counting vertically? I've got 12 if you count them. If you know your graph grid then you obviously don't need to worry about counting them each time if you're using grid paper that you're, uh, graph paper that you're familiar with. So half of this grid then in the y-axis or the vertical direction, is six large squares. Right, so now what I need to do is look at what my Y data is, which I said was the P data. So this the minimum is 0 0.100, and the maximum is 0 0.200. So I'm just taking the smallest and largest giving me a difference of 0.1. So now what I need to do is divide the 0.1 by half of the grid, which is six large squares. So 0.1 divided by six, and that gives me 0.0167 per large square that I need to use to satisfy my condition of using a minimum of half of the grid. Again I need to choose a systematic value because going up in 0 0.0167 each grid square is not going to be very suitable. So I'm going to use at 0 0.01. Okay let's put those onto the grid now and I need to again I need to make sure I'm starting just below or equal to 0.1 and going up at least to, to reach 0.2. So if I start at 0.1, you notice I'm using a false origin here. So this point here is not 0, 0. That's absolutely fine. That's in, some, in a lot of cases, that's actually necessary. But this is absolutely fine. This is good. And now I've reached 0 0.20. That's that's okay. I'm I'm leaving one here. You could put that one in if you wanted to, but uh, if you just leave a couple of places without a label, that's fine. I've covered every, all of my data. That's the key thing. So there we go. We have some nice systematic axis scales, which should well, it will um, cause my plots to be more than half the grid apart in the both directions. Let's plot those points to verify that. So the first one is for P of 0 0.1, so I have 0 0.63, so that's 0.6, yeah, it's about here. Yeah. Next one is 0.12, I've rotated the grid so that we can see all of the plots together and we will verify that they are indeed half the grid apart. So to count from here, I need to remember I need to have covered more than four large squares. So if I count that one there, about there, it's about two, three, four. So I think that's four there. And you can see that counting from this point here to this point here takes me well beyond that threshold there. So I have indeed covered more than half the grid in that direction. And I need to, to have covered more than six in the vertical direction as well. So counting from here, one, two, three, four, five, six. There you go, that's six. And again, 
this one up here is much more than the required threshold. So I've used a lot of the grid here, much more than half. That's how you work out the scale for your axes and make sure you use more than half the grid.